Today's Ask Reddit post. What is a product that if people found out how it was made they'd stop buying it? Oh boy, this is gonna be a good one. Let's get started. Not really a product but if people knew how much and often people cut corners in construction. I think housing prices would go way I I I down. I don't think I was ever on a job where a problem came up. And people were like, okay, let's start over and do this right. Or, especially in bigger construction companies. How much time the employees waste to run the clock. Edit. Guys trust me when I say I have put my sweat and blood into the industry. My hands are calused. I'm still working class and it wasn't my intention to call out people that do this stuff as lazy or whatever else. Most people doing these jobs are extremely underpaid. And on top of being underpaid, they're putting their bodies and health on the line every single day. I almost lost a finger. Twice. I've almost had a whole granite slab fall on me for $11 sign HR. I probably would have died. And many more situations I won't get into. Don't take it out on the workers. Just try your best to work with a smaller company that isn't working 50 jobs at once and has a supervisor owner around to watch what's going on. When you buy a used house, you'd be shocked at the corners people cut to make them look sellable. I work at a home improvement retailer. They ask you how to do a project and then disregard what you say if they can do it easier, faster or cheaper. I know the signs of budget flips and budget repairs now. Yep, yeah, the house next to ours was bought by some flippers after the previous neighbor moved out because they got divorced. The flippers gutted the house and then found a really convenient place to dump the debris. The pool. They filled the pool with a bunch of junk. Then covered it all up with dirt. Put a layer of fresh sod on top and bordered it with pavers and flowers. It looked really nice at first. At least long enough to sell the house. Then a few months later everything started to settle. Okay this one. This one is the worst. Nothing. People know what goes into hot dogs and chicken nuggets. They still eat them. They've seen what the sweatshops look like. And they still buy stuff from there. Fresh juices are not so fresh apparently. A friend whose family owns Mango Orchard told me these companies buy the leftover stock that doesn't sell directly and leave the rest to strong artificial flavoring for uniform taste. But fresh squeezed is marketing. You can deliver orange juice year round in three ways. 1. Buy fresh oranges and squeeze them yourself. 2. Squeeze the oranges. Remove most of the water and freeze a concentrate. This is sold as frozen concentrate. 3. Squeeze the oranges. Then separate all the components of the juice mechanically and chemically. Store the various components in huge tanks. Sometimes for years. Then mix it with flavors and preservatives. Bottle it. And sell it before it separates again. This is sold as fresh squeezed. Because it's never been frozen. Unless you physically see method 1. Method 2 is far. Far fresher. Man this really makes me miss my orange tree that I used to have. I bought a jumbo legit juicer from William Sonoma and used to have so much orange juice that I didn't know what to do with it. I used to give it away to friends and family in gallon milk jugs. So jealous. When I lived in San Diego I almost bought a house with both orange and avocado trees. The one I got had figs and plums. Though. Figs and plums are a sweet consolation prize. You can always add an avocado. Just don't count on it giving you any fruit for 5 plus years. Anyone who enjoys sausage and respects the law should never find out how either are made. No one really knows how the game is played the art of the trade how the sausage gets made. We just assume that it happens. But no one else is in the room where it happens. Silk. Bonus story, had a friend who worked briefly in bridal and was fitting a woman who was boasting how vegan and eco-friendly her wedding was going to be. No one was allowed to wear leather etc. All while wearing her dress with huge amounts of silk on it. ETA. The 17th of July 2020. A lot of people asking if my friend told the bride. So I asked her. No I didn't. The bride and her friend started making fun of my disability when they thought I wasn't in the room and couldn't hear them. I would have also lost my job if I had lost the sale. In high school, the girls in my class were horrified to find out what their rugs were made of. They had no idea. What did the think sheepskin boots were made from? 
pretty sure they thought it was synthetic. Or they never realized they were referred to as being sheepskin, and got them due to popularity. Either way, they were not happy about this revelation. I can just hear them while reading this and being grossed out. Ugh. Certain signed artwork. Used to work at an art printing company that we did signature editions of certain pieces. Guess who did the signing me and some co-workers. We were all design and art majors so they just had us learn all the artists signatures. We even had machines that could mimic the signatures too. I wish I had a picture of the devices they were pretty cool. It was in the fine print that we were doing it and was approved by the artists but I guarantee most people would never buy the prints if they knew the signatures were forged. So always read the fine print when buying items. Especially special editions of stuff. Only buying from artists from now on. Same. I'm only buying the artist from now on for authenticity. I really don't think there is one. If it's because the ingredients or preparation are disgusting. I think most people are perfectly happy to keep eating using it because the finished product is fine. If it's a moral reason. I just don't think most people would care enough to stop using or eating whatever the product is. We've known for years that Air Jordans are being made with child labor in sweatshops. And sales haven't dipped one bit due to that. And I don't say this as a cynic. I think we should work to improve conditions for all humanity. But the proportion of consumers who would be bothered enough to stop buying a thing is vanishingly small. The human brain is incredibly good at forgetting and ignoring information that might inconvenience it. Slurm. Poplars. Pop a poplar in your mouth when you come to Fishy Joe's. What they're made of is a mystery. Where they come from. No one knows. You can kick em. You can lick em. You can chew em. You can stick em. If you promise not to sue us. Stick one up your nose. I'd imagine if people walk through the sweatshops that produce most of their clothing. They would consider spending a bit more for products made in a more humane way. One of the reasons I think buying ethically made clothing is difficult is the large price difference at least with the clothes I've seen. Also, many of the shops I've seen with strong ethical values tend to be online. And there are some clothing items that are difficult to buy without trying them on. I want to do better but the industry doesn't make it easy. Yep. And if you want ethically sourced clothes you need to be two things. Thin and have plenty of money. I'm fat and when I got my last job was very determined to have a humanely made plus size wardrobe for it. It proved to be impossible. Even if I got to the point I could make a lot of my own clothes. I have a chronic illness that can make that very difficult. I'm never going to become a professional tailor with skill to make work clothes. I never thought about that side of it. Thanks for sharing your experience. There are never second hand clothes in charity shops either. It's extremely difficult to buy ethically when you're fat. Nightmare. I want to say sneakers by brands like Nike. Who exploit, underpay and abuse their workers. But sadly most people already know how they are made and still buy them. Chocolate produced by child labor. Babies. Why? How do they make babies? This reminds me of a documentary series my dad once watched. Garlic. The garlic industry is a hell of a lot darker than most people would think. I don't remember everything. But apparently a lot of Chinese companies that sell to restaurants overseas use prison labor. These inmates have to peel the garlic completely by hand. No tools whatsoever. There were a few inmates missing fingernails. If I recall correctly, one man said that he had a friend who had to resort to using his teeth because he didn't have any nails left. They work unimaginably grueling shifts, in which they have to meet a quota for the day or face consequences. They get paid very little, if anything at all. They all seemed so miserable. The series is titled Rotten. You can find it on Netflix. Rotten is so good. There's one about how the avocado trade fuels cartels in Michoacan, Mexico and other ones about milk, cod, chocolate, wine, weed edibles, and more. Don't forget the honey market. Who knew? Yup. So many people think they're buying healthy honey when really it's just corn syrup. I buy from the local beekeepers in my town and it's a night and day difference. Exactly. Why the duck would you buy honey from a factory? 
I lived in this part of southern India where there's this tribe called the Adivasi that collected a lot of goodies from the forest. One of those goodies was wild honey. And it was way cheaper than store bought honey. I used to pay triple because I could support their lives and still get it cheaper than store bought. And my god it was godly in taste. The bees fed on nectar from wildflowers that grew in remote parts of the forest that only the Adivasi knew how to find. So these guys would search for the flowers. Wait for bees to come and go after the bees to find their hive. Food companies will never show this level of dedication. Not exactly a product, but certain legal services. A lot of times lawyers are just filling in blanks from a template when drafting documents. And many problems can be resolved with a 2 minute online search if you know where to look. If the public had the knowledge of and access to the resources available to lawyers, there's an awful lot people could figure out for themselves. Of course, that's not to say it's a good idea to DIY a legal matter if you don't know exactly what you're doing. Just that the prices people pay for certain legal services aren't commensurate with the amount of time and effort they actually take the lawyer to complete. Edit. I am a lawyer myself. And I'll echo others comments by saying that you can seriously screw yourself or your loved ones over by doing even something as simple as a will incorrectly. In matters above a certain level of complexity it would be insane to even consider representing yourself. The point still remains that my clients might think twice about how much they paid me if they watched me draft their deed in 6 minutes while listening to a let's play in one earbud and browsing reddit in another tab. As a corporate lawyer, this is 100% true up until you get to a certain level. If you are selling or buying a business, or once you get into a certain dollar amount, just googling a form document won't work. Same goes for anything that starts to touch on securities laws. There go my plans of being a fake lawyer. Buy might be a stretch, but porn. When abuse happens there, not only is it pretty abominable, but the end user also watches a good bit of it with their own eyes. You'd be surprised how many products, including food, involve slavery, edit, and or animal cruelty. I greatly prefer to go leather free in anything I use. I'm torn on leather. I've heard that it's typically made of the leftover skin from beef cattle that farmers sell to places that make leather and I can totally get behind the idea of not wasting any part of the animal. But if that's not the case, and it's literally just from animals killed for their leather, that's definitely not okay. Veal. Yup there is a reason why you don't see too many male calves on a dairy farm. Because of the low amount of milk they give. Exactly. However the milk they do provide is worth some money. As others have said, I unfortunately think it takes more than just the knowledge to make people change long standing habits. But here are some things people don't usually like to think about. 1. Cows need to get pregnant before they'll produce milk. And milk production only lasts about 10 months after that in dairy cows. So dairy cows are forcibly impregnated about once a year by farmers breeders using special devices. In order to ensure continuous milk production, the cows live around 4-6 years before being sent to slaughter, and have around 2-4 calves. If raised as pets, cows live 18-22 years. 2. Different kinds of chickens are preferred for meat versus egg production. So when raising chickens for eggs, it's not cost effective to raise the male chicks. They're all killed as young as possible to minimize waste. Maceration is common. Smashing them instantly, because it's fastest and thus most humane. I eat eggs and sometimes dairy, despite lactose intolerance. Not judging anyone. But I do wish we had more stringent regulations around treatment of the animals we depend on. Edit. These things are generally true of the large-scale industrial farms that are optimizing for cost and supply the bulk of our dairy eggs. Smaller operations can do considerably better, but it often takes some research and a little extra effort to find them. I can't remember what documentary it was but, I'll never forget the undercover footage of them throwing the male chicks into plastic bags to suffocate. It's so sad. I don't remember which one either, but in this one I saw. They had pickers that would just toss male chicks into a meat grinder alive. Fast fashion. Even a conservative estimate puts that industry as the fifth biggest polluter. Globally. Just stop it. 
Fashion is honestly one of the worst industries out there, up there with electronics and industrial farming. But unlike those other two, we don't really need it at the scale it's at right now. Pollution is just the tip of the iceberg, the part we can see and are personally impacted by. What we don't see is the child labor used to make it, subtly injected unhealthy body standards in the advertising. The animal abuse for fur when synthetic fur is no different and actually cheaper. And just how much the consumer is influenced to overconsume. I mean who in their right mind would really give a duck about the difference between fall fashion and winter fashion if the advertising didn't tell us we needed to buy it to make people like us? People always point at Apple for exploiting Chinese labor but don't realize that pretty much every company does the same thing and most of them use the exact same factory as Apple. It's called Foxconn not Apple. They make everything. Apple charges a premium for their American designed Chinese labor. If anyone could afford to do better, it's them. But instead they let people just assume they must be doing better. Because why would Apple ever do wrong? They do do better. Just not better enough. Foxconn is a better place to work in China compared to other factories. RVs. They aren't insulated fully. Nothing is sealed correctly. All the electronics that are fancy and new are outdated and inefficient. The manufacturers use the cheapest materials possible and all RVs are built in 8 hours. A vacation home. On wheels. In 8 hours. Nothing is sealed correctly. I spent every summer until I was 17 camping up north in an RV. And thinking back on all the bugs that got inside despite having doors or windows closed when the AC was running. I don't think I could ever do it again. Almost anything to be fair. Nike. Apple. I could go on for days. The people making them have terrible conditions. Apples just grow on trees. What is so gross about that? Them trees covered in snakes bro. Does anything exist that doesn't harm other living beings in some way? Dandelions. They exist to break up hard soil so that other plants can grow. They are also good for removing concrete or asphalt. But if you want to remove large rocks, you'll need something a little bigger. Manitoba maple tree roots have been known to grow in the crevices of rocks. Breaking up even granite. Plants like these are the demolition crews of the natural world. Mirrors. It involves sending miners into deep arctic caves to retrieve the element mirrorium. It's a crystal in its natural state and apparently you could make a 10 feet x 10 feet mirror out of just a pen tip sized amount. I'm obviously making this up because I don't know how mirrors are made and they scare me. I can't ducking unread this. Man. Thanks a lot. I guess back to looking at my reflection on the side of my toaster. Gelatine. Pretty much all meat and poultry. There's a reason people take their kids to the strawberry fields to pick their own food and not the slaughterhouses. I remember going to a slaughterhouse when I was in elementary school. We made a few stops to a few different farms, fields, and then to the slaughterhouse. Kind of messed up now that I think of it. I had no issues since my dad had been a butcher and I understood where meat came from. But I remember seeing a few kids crying when we were through. Emo people should know. They should be taught about where food comes from. What goes into it. And not just the vegan propaganda but what small farms are like and how controlled hunting helps wildlife. From there you can actually make informed decisions about your diet and about ethic and economic impact stances for yourself. Vegetables aren't necessarily made so this might not count but if people saw the exploitation of people that went into getting their fruits and vegetables it would be a different story. Many minorities work their asses off for little to no pay, through rain or shine. If they saw the hands and feet of the workers that provide them with the food, they'd be pretty shocked. How hard could it be all you do is pick fruit and vegetables all day yeah right. Also the annoying oh my god you should be vegan it's completely cruelty free people should shut up because the food you're provided with by grocery stores isn't cruelty free either. Vegan food may not be completely cruelty free, but it does reduce diet related cruelty. Semicolon slaughterhouse workers have high rates of workplace injury and PTSD. Semicolon animals suffer horribly in the meat egg dairy industries. Semicolon non-vegans also eat fruits and veg. 
contributing to exploitation on both ends. Also, animals eat those vegetables, so by being vegan you actually kill less plants. Bro, you actually watched the whole video, I'd give you a high five if I was a human. Make sure to click the like button and subscribe for more great content. See you next time.